Hi, I'm Josh Rothkopf, Senior Movies Editor at Entertainment Weekly. I'm very honored to be having a discussion with our two guests. Audrey Diwan is the director and screenwriter of Happening, which is the winner of the Golden Lion at 2021's Venice Film Festival. And Christian Wunju is the director and screenwriter of Four Months, Three Weeks, and Two Days, winner of the Palme d'Or at 2007's Cannes Film Festival. Both films are major statements about abortion, particularly on the lack of accessibility that women have to abortion. IFC Films is proud to have distributed both films. And why don't we get started? Um, Audrey, your film takes place in France in 1963. Christian, your film takes place in 1987 in Romania. Um, but it's tragic how both films feel very timely to the situation right now happening in America. It leads me to a very obvious first question for both of you. Did you mean your films to be perceived as period pieces? Go ahead. <laughs> um, no, I didn't. I mean, when, when talking about illegal abortion, I know and always feel that it's always timely somewhere. So now we have the feeling that it's even more because we're talking about the United States. But you know, what struck me when I read the book of Annie Arnaud is that it's a nowadays story for so many women. So, I mean, I feared something is that um, period piece often come with some kind of a nostalgia, you know? And I really have no nostalgia for, for that period of time in France. So no, I, I, I really wanted to catch the, the heart of the instant, whereas to, to, to tell a story set in the past. And Christian, in your film, you don't even mention the word or the phrase communism, if I remember correctly. Um, why didn't you do that? And were you trying to reach a similar kind of universality with your film as well? I didn't mention it because people were not really mentioning it. Mm -hmm. So primarily what I was trying to do is to tell a story happening in that period and to see what were the side effects of uh, the way communism was treating people. Um, I never, I was never trying to, to make any kind of statement, not, not even about abortion, to be honest. I think that this was, of course, part of the way why these characters were together. And, and it was showing a lot to me, the side effects on people of having power. Whenever somebody is in, in the position of having too much power on somebody else, especially if they lived as we lived in, in this place where the state is abusing you, you will become abusive. But um, one important thing to say from the beginning about that, that film and what, what I was trying to do is to make sure that in, in, in you use cinema and art to listen to the other. It's very easy, and especially nowadays, it's very easy to have firm and clear ideas about abortion and freedom, and we pretty much all have them. But I think that art starts the moment when you challenge yourself to listen to the other. And this is what I was trying to do there, to make sure that um, even the context was kind of special, I was listening to the arguments that everybody was having about this issue. And I, I noticed that in actually in both of your films, um, there are no real distinct villains per se in these films. Uh, I feel like a lot of the characters are products of their environment. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. I actually, I would, I'm very curious about where do these stories come for each of you? Uh, Audrey, maybe you could go first on this. Where, where, I know that your film is based on a novel. Uh, how did you approach the book and what was resonant for you about the material? First, I'd love to say that I completely agree with what Mr. Munju just said. I mean, um, I guess that when a movie is getting moral, when we have moral statement, it's, to me, it's less, a bit less of an art, artistic piece, you know? So I like the, the, the movies to open questions, not so much give answers, you know. Uh, so my purpose was just to say, 
look, the, the, the book starts when the, the decision is already made. Uh, and I think it's kind of a very political uh, underneath statement because you don't see a girl hesitating whereas she should or not have an abortion, but it's more like now she has made the decision, let's carefully look at the process. And it comes where the place where I discovered the book. I mean, when I read the book, I just had myself an abortion medicalized and I wanted to read about the topic. And then I discovered that I knew nothing about illegal abortion. I grew up with words, but those words come with no reality. And I think it was meant for a reason. Like we are not supposed to talk about it, not supposed to, uh, to really understand what it is about. And for me, the main difference was that on one side, uh, medicalized abortion is some kind of a routine, goes with some kind of a routine, whereas illegal abortion is about random. And this random comes with a strange suspense, you know, unbearable suspense. So I followed the girl, but you know, at the beginning I read the book for very intimate purpose. And then I kept the character in mind. What I, I never intended to do a piece on, on illegal abortion. I look carefully to that girl who tries to be free. You know, she has sexual desire, intellectual desire. She, she wants to be a writer someday. And on that, on that way, you know, on trying to get free, she has to get an illegal abortion. And that's the way I portrayed her story, I guess. Mm. Kristen, can you uh, speak to where the story for four months came from and what captivated you specifically about that subject? Um, for me, it's simpler in a way. It's a story that I knew personally. Uh, actually, I knew these girls, and I don't know, it was a kind of a painful story for a long while, <clears throat> and I never thought I'm going to make a film about it or ever tell it to somebody else. I was a little bit like this girl at the end of the film, saying, look, we're never going to speak about this again. Uh, but, you know, years later, I ran across into one of these girls, and you know, all of a sudden this came up and it shaped that much our relationship. And obviously it was a thing that you couldn't really uh, pretend to forget. And all of a sudden I have this uh, revelation that it was capturing so much the essence of our youth, of what we lived, and especially mm -hmm. not so much in what was happening, but in the atmosphere. Whenever you're, you're living um, in a dictatorial period like this and in a state like this, there's something in the air. And I think this is the most difficult thing to capture in cinema, mm -hmm. not what happens, but how people felt and how they related to this kind of very imprecise anxiety which was in society. And actually, you were always looking for somebody that was like, following you and you were suspicious about everybody and i thought it's a story talking naturally about freedom about choices but also somehow about the responsibility because um, the context are very different in what was happening then in romania and what happens today in us for example uh, we need to keep this distance because uh, when this law was uh, issued in Romania in 1966, it was issued in a period in which there was no other possibility for women and for couples to avoid having children. There was no contraception at all. This was the only and last method. And this one was forbidden so that population increases. Uh, so the context, but, but the context was a little bit different. And of course, it was a context in which you couldn't protest. Things were coming, uh, was decisions from up to people. Uh, so you just had to find a way of going around. And I thought that this is capturing so much the essence of what we've lived, that it will be a bigger story than just a story about abortion mm -hmm. and its consequences. Yes, and uh, I like that this your focus in emphasizing the overall atmosphere and the conditions. 
it's not simply a question of access in either of your films. It's also, I find it fascinating that both of your movies are also about solidarity or perhaps the lack thereof uh, between women uh, and, and the way that it's not just simply um, medical providers who may go to jail for, for providing access to abortions, but there's also the, the, uh, the tensions that, that come about between friends or so-called friends or colleagues. Um, so can you both give me, uh, can you talk to me a little bit about uh, that question of female solidarity in the context of your films and how you approach that question? Um, I have a book, so I question what I was reading. And uh, it's more um, <clears throat> a problem told through human beings perspective, because, you know, some people want to help her, but what I felt, and we talked a lot about it with Annie Arnaud, is that uh, the whole society was scared. What you felt through the story is that everybody is scared. People who want to help and people who don't, you know, whenever you help, you can end up in jail, actually. So it changes a lot. Talking about the doctors, you know, so some are clearly against the idea of abortion. Some are not. But, you know, you have to be a hero to decide that you could actually lose your job uh, for helping a girl you don't know who's just showing up and say, help me, you know. So um, I think one thing is very interesting in the book that I kept in the movie is that a girl helped my character and at the end of her journey and she's not a friend. She's even a girl who is actually against the idea, but I strongly think that, you know, you have your ideas on one side and then you see someone dying and that changes lots of things, you know? So who you, who you would be in front of that girl dying, you know? You, actually, you can't tell. I mean, I can't tell for myself, you know, who, who you're gonna be in that situation, who you would be and how you would react. I think that's my main interest. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and would would a person become a hero if presented with a situation to rise to that occasion? Christian, when I watch Four Months, I, I think especially of the, um, the female kinship and the solidarity of your two main characters. Why was that important for you to tell the story through a dual pers uh, perspective like that? Um, you know, as, as I was writing the screenplay, I started the screenplay, um, um, the story imagining that this girl who was having the abortion was the main character, uh, mm -hmm. just to end up at the end with the idea that actually, actually, no, actually the girl that I'm going to follow all the time is the girl who understands more at the end um, because she was willing to take risk that she could avoid. And also because, um, it corresponded a little bit more to the kind of situation that I knew in the sense that what was difficult was for people not to become heroes, as you put it, because actually nobody realized that he's making this kind of statement, but to express a sort of friendship and solidarity. And even if it was like giving an advice and giving an address to somebody saying, call this person, that already involved the risk. And this is also, again, a very big difference between what was then and what is the situation today. It's hard to, to describe and to imagine that you could risk something and even risk to go to prison simply for talking about something or for giving some, some, somebody information about something. Uh, of course, you couldn't help um, somebody directly unless you're having medical knowledge, but Unfortunately, people were also trying to do this in the sense that I, I know personally a lot of, I don't know, um, acquaintances, of, acquaintances of mine from that period who were trying to be helpful, even lacking somehow the, the basic medical principles, which led to even more tragedies. But what was interesting to see is that together with some a lot of people taking advantage of the situations. There were really a lot of people who were moved and trying to help out these couples and these women to get back to their uh, normal life. 
and in a way that would somehow minimize the risks. I, I grew up in a family of, of my, my father was a doctor. So I knew from, from this medical system, from his colleagues, this was things that they were kind of talking in a low voice in house of how a lot of people from the medical system were trying systematically to help these women because they could. And some of them managed to do this for years before somebody else had, I don't know, something against them. And then they were very, very easy to blackmail. But they were kind of, I don't know, heroes if you want of that period, even if hero is a very big word. But every gesture of solidarity in a period like this is a gesture that you need to cherish later on because these people were, made, were taking risks. Yeah. Uh, the clock is ticking for both um, in both films for your characters. Uh, and I, I think it really should be stressed that both of these movies are really gripping pieces of suspense. Um, and so maybe a question for both of you about the craft of your films. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the work that you did with your cinematographers? Um, sometimes the cinematography feels very claustrophobic. Often it feels very naturalistic and unvarnished. And I, I, it seems to me that you want your audiences to really be engaging with the story. So how careful was your cinematography planned and was there an aesthetic that you had in mind? Um, for in, uh, in my, on my side, I mean, the main question was the time. You know, the, the, I, my first impulse was wrong. I, I wrote a screenplay thinking she's in a hurt and every sequence was, was kind of too short. Then I realized her inner time, her inner clock is not the same as the rest of the students around her. So uh, I, I have to reverse the process and give it and give the time to every sequence because we know what's going on inside her. You know, you everybody perfectly knows that, you know, it's a, some kind of a strong kicking clock you have inside when you, when you are trying to get an abortion. So the time of the others is not your own time. And we were carefully thinking about the exact length of every sequence uh, trying to make the movie because, you know, as I don't cut much, I can't edit much. So the ex exact length of every sequence has to be found on set. And on one side, if I ask Anna Maria Bartolome, my actress, to show that she's in pain, I mean, she actually can do that in two seconds, but it's theoretical. You don't feel it. And then if we give time, if she manages to do that, because it's hard, uh, then we start feeling how she feels. But there was, to me, another risk. Like, if I go too far that way and it's too long, then I become provocative. And that was not my goal. And I just wanted to ask the right questions uh, and, and show things that I really felt was, were fair to me. So, so yeah, we worked a lot uh, with uh, Laurent Tangy, with the cinematographer, on this idea, like how to give time to the character and how to find the exact right lens of every sequence on set. Mm -hmm. um, I made some, some decisions when I shot that film and some of them were connected to the story. Some of, the, some of them were just connected to the way I was perceiving cinema and film. I really thought along a lot before starting shooting that film about the means that you have as a filmmaker, as a cinematographer, as a director. And I started asking myself, so what, why? Why do, why do you do like this? Why do you do like this and you don't do like this? And then I ended up with this idea that the film needs to, to let the spectator decide what's important and you shouldn't be making yourself too present as a director in each shot, because anyhow, uh, you chose the story and the characters and you tell the story. So your, your influence on how, how the, the story is going to be perceived is, is already quite big. So I decided that if I can, ideally, I would try to ju just capture in a very Bressonian way, if you want, every other moment without any kind of cut, which is not an exercise of style, it's a principle about the essence of cinema, which is revealing something 
uh, revealing how time passes, if you want, without any kind of intervention. But this, this means that you need to abstain from using edit for a continuous moment. And mm. we didn't know at the beginning if we can do this, because it's one thing to get to this kind of like philosophical idea about cinema, and it's something else to be able to master it in a craftly way. So we started mm. the second day of shooting, we had a little bit longer takes and we said, okay, let's try to do one continuous moment of this shot up to here. And we said, well, uh, let's get to the bathroom maybe. And because there's no point, it's the same moment. And little by little, we advanced it to this. And by the end of that film, uh, we had enough, I don't know, craft to be able to stage any situation like this. And this helped a lot the rhythm of the film in the sense that if, if something was too long, you had to tackle it at the shooting and get the right rhythm within the shot. And this changes completely the way of acting, the way of, of dealing with the actors. Everything needs to be internalized. And there's a statement associated with this kind of, of acting that um, you don't establish as a director what's more important in this moment. This is important, this is not important, I'm going to cut this out. It, it's not like this. You have some responsibilities of filmmaker. And one of them is to keep this distance and to let the spectator be the witness of this moment. And it brought something to the rhythm and to the tension and to the way time is passing. Because the main character who is uh, played by a girl also called Ana Maria, which I like. Yes. When I watched your film and when I met Ana Maria Bartolome, I really loved this 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 kind of uh, coincidence, let's say. Um, for Ana Maria, what, what, what was important is to be able to react to every little tiny thing happening. Because as you know, cinema shouldn't be made or life is not made by important moments. It's made by a lot of dull moments. Most of our moments are dead. <laughs> There's nothing much happening. So if you if you allow these these, these moments to come into the film, they mm. would deliver something like a feeling which is closer to reality. You experience how time passes and how the character needs to uh, relate to what's important while having to I don't know be in this kind that kind of dinner for example, and in that dinner in the film you feel how time passes, how she doesn't want to be there, how she thinks about something else. And I think this is, you know, the power of, of cinema, if you want. If you manage to shoot a character and relate to the fact that she thinks about something else which is not on screen, that's something for which it's worth doing cinema. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and having that kind of generosity to let us let a scene or a sequence stretch out without edits really creates a different reality for us as an audience. Audrey, you have some very long extended shots in happening. Um, some of them are very hard to watch, um, and I, I think rightly so. What is the intention there about having having an un, un, uninterrupted shot of a medical procedure like that? Um, I, I do agree with many things that uh, Mr. Mungi said. And you know, uh, if I want to go through the journey of that girl, trying not to look at her, but be her, it's the same idea with a different process, you know? Let's be that girl and then you think what you want to think. So uh, I can't be her if I don't try to experience it. So I was trying to be that girl reacting to everything that was happening to her in, 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 the, in this moment, you know, and she goes to a, the abortionist and she doesn't know that woman. And I was thinking, okay, of course, it's the most intimate moment of your life, you know, you're, you're the legs open and, and the gesture she's going to make will decide whereas you you're die or leave, you know, and you don't know anything about her. She doesn't know anything about you. So all you can rely on is your experience and what you are looking at. So every moment, every second, every gesture, every breathing. So I, wor I worked with uh, the actress on the, the, the feeling of the instant and the feeling of the instant comes with time. And it was very interesting because uh, this sequence at the end of the movie, at uh, the film, when she goes to the abortionist, we didn't plan how long it would be. And it's a seven minute and a half shot. And I realized that we actually did correctly 
the, the shot when nobody realized that it lasts so long. So you have to disappear behind the actress and, and the cinematographer and they were moving together as if they were dancing and we were following our instincts sometime, you know, just in order to be in our inner world or in her mind. And I thought it was the best way to go through that story and explore that world. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you both about the future, maybe the future moment after your films. Uh, for for Christian, do you do you reflect on four months uh, or ever wish to revisit those characters? And and also for you, Audrey, uh, I know that Anne's story continues in in further books. Would you ever want to follow Anne's progression in a sequel? Um, I I don't watch my my films again after I, you know, I don't know, I I can't really and. Uh, it's the end of a process, but there's something funny. Somebody told me once at some point that in a very strange way, um, Beyond the Hills, which was my next film after mm -hmm. uh, four months, somehow follows in a certain way, something connected with these girls. And that was, it, it was not necessarily, I, I, I mean, it was never something consciously planned at all. It's still my interest about being very close to the characters, the way they relate to difficult situations and the way this depicts not only a precise local contextual vision about life, but hopefully something about the state of the world in that moment in general. At least this is what I'm trying to do but not by following necessarily the same characters, but by finding mm -hmm. out every other time what is the most relevant thing that happens today and says something about how people relate to the state of world today. That's, that may, may sound quite ambitious, but this is why I need so much time in between films because I'm always looking about something relevant to say. We need so much time to make a film and such a huge energy. So I feel that I, I, I can't do whatever, you know? I need to, first of all, figure out what else do I want to say about the world, if anything. If not, I, I will just be silent for a while. And whenever I find this, I try to see in which way this expands the small contextual situation in which this thing, this thing happened and get to talk ideally about and to the audience sitting in the in the dark in the room. Very often at the end of the, the this kind of Q&As that you have with, with the audience, I have this feeling that it's easier for the audience to watch the story on the screen because it's about somebody else and it's easier to see a story about somebody else, but actually it's about them. And I'm telling this to them every time. So just get home and uh, in the train back home or in the car, because you're alone and there's nobody there. Think a little bit and see if what I told you it's about them or it's about you. I think it's about you. And I think it's good to have a position all the time about the things that you want, don't want to acknowledge about yourself. And actually this is the thing that I was always trying to do together with thinking every other time about the means that I'm using. I always try to double check if it's not too formal, if it didn't, I don't know, turn into a style that I'm not challenging and double checking every time. I can't say that you, you can come over with a new idea, new principles about cinema every time and you shouldn't and necessarily if you don't find something else. But I try to make sure all the time that uh, I'm not just, you know, too good at, at doing complicated things, but forgot why I'm, I'm doing this. Right. <laughs> There is some kind of a profound and very interesting humility in the way you place things, I, I guess. I mean, the meanings has to come first. And uh, I guess this is my process too. I mean, I really admire Dani Arno's work for one thing. Like she has some kind of a very brutal honesty. She never tries to write legends. She, she speaks about herself, but in such an honest way, saying things nobody dared to say before that at the end, 
it's also the story of many other people who never dared to say the same thing. So she comes from, from a very intimate place and, and being that honest, you can actually speak about other people and it's the way she transformed her I writing at the first person to a we that really interests me. And I guess that is my impulse. I mean, if I start writing something that I am ready to do it regarding to a topic I've been you know, asking myself a lot before. And when I find something that I think I should say, reaching that brutal honesty, if I can do that, then I have to start working before I have nothing to say. Makes sense. Um, I, I very much enjoyed this conversation. I would love it if we could close this out by having the two of you perhaps ask each other a question. I know you're both fans of each other. Audrey, do you have a question for Christian? Yes, there is one shot that lots of people talked about when you actually can see the fetus and you know it lasts for a while. And I, re I was really wondering because I saw your movie many times when you edit it, what, what, what did you have in mind? Okay, <clears throat> I got this question very many times. And uh, actually, there are two things to say here. First of all, um, it lasts as, as long as the character needed to perform her action at the same time, and not longer than this. I never meant for that shot to last, to last a specific I don't know, period of time, like mm. five seconds, 10 seconds on, or whatever. It is the result of um, being coherent with my way of style, with my style, with my way of shooting. Uh, the character was doing something at the same time and she was getting back. So the decision was, my decision was just where to point the camera, to what to point the camera. And I decided that I needed to point the camera to this baby, if you want, mm -hmm. and the statement was there already. I created that dummy before the shooting. I wanted to have it in the film. I knew that I wanted to shoot it and I wanted to shoot it and to have it and to show it for one precise reason, because um, together with the freedom to decide there's a responsibility and the responsibility needs to come uh, with the strength of understanding the whole complexity of the situation. It's not that easy. If you haven't been in such a situation, it's easy to talk about abortion in a theoretical way. If you've ever been through an abortion and through the process, well, um, there are details that come to you that might give you this impulse of thinking over. And I think that it was my duty to quote somehow the arguments of these people who are, I don't know, for moral or religious or whatever kind of purposes mm -hmm. against abortion. It's, uh, of course, abortion needs to be uh, uh, free for women always, but I have to say this, it shouldn't be, it should just be the last solution for avoiding having children. If you can use all the other solutions before uh, having to get to this, I think it's better. This should be like, I don't know, your safety net in case nothing else proved to be uh, coherent and you couldn't avoid having children in a different other way. And that was one of the main, this was one of the main arguments when I was talking to people in that period. And I thought it's just fair because sometimes what happens is that you can't really imagine things. Uh, words don't have this power that image has. So I thought it's just fair that uh, things stay balanced. It's up to you to decide, but just, I don't know, like face things the way they are. And then it's up to you. It's your responsibility. Mm. Christian, I have a, very, a, a, a more trivial question. Uh, I don't know. It's, I, 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 I have to start by saying that I, I like a lot uh, what you did. I thought it's Thank a you. great film very strong piece of cinema. I was very happy for, for what happened to the film. I hope it will have a great career in US, especially given the situation now. And not because of the situation, but because it has the right measure and distance every time and everything is composed, everything is internalized. I loved it. 
Uh, of course, when I watched it, I wanted to ask you how come from all the possible, I don't know, actors, actresses in the world, you chose to make a film talking about abortion using an actress of Romanian origin called Ana Maria? Um, I have uh, also Romanian roots. My, my mother is half Romanian. I don't think it has nothing to do with my choice, but you know, I, uh, we talked a lot about family and film related. Now, talking about uh, the way she plays. First of all, she entered the room with questions. And I like the way she asked me questions because she wanted to understand the meaning. And I, you know, I don't rehearse the, the key scenes. I, I think you have to be at risk when you create. And she followed that, that process and she wanted to secure the meanings with me. And in order to be free at one point, to play and let her, let it go and just jump into the sequence. So I think it's very rare and important. I mean, being a young actress is a lot of, of pressure on your shoulders, especially when the movie is all about you. But the fact that she didn't want it just right away to start playing, but she wanted to understand and the whole process was before, and then <clears throat> she was ready to jump in. And we also worked a lot and I felt she has very incredible skills doing that. Uh, we work on the body, you know, how she moves regarding what she has in mind, you know, how you, how you make a body work with the mind. And it, it comes naturally with her, I'd say. She's very subtle. She don't tries to do much. She internalized every process. And I felt blessed that I met her and that we get to do this movie together. Uh, it's an incredible form of performance that she gives. Um, and I want to thank you both for these very thoughtful answers. I enjoyed this conversation. Audrey Diwan, Christian Munju, thank you very much.